how's it going everyone happy uh happy sunday um so uh today's topic we're doing um giving you guys a little bit of an update on my um work holiday visa slash uh permanent residency situation here in canada um and today's topic is actually in relation to extending my uh my visa which um i'll get into in a little bit um i'm actually inside today there's a reason for that if, if you've uh followed the community posts um recently you'll and probably the news you'll also have noticed that the fires are are pretty bad um around british columbia uh there's no threat here in in, in revelstoke right now but the smoke it, it is quite bad so i'm i'm going to be doing inside today uh I can already see we've got one or two people chiming in. So just to, if you are new to this, um, just to explain how it works is that first sort of 10 minutes or so, I'll go through the topic. And then after that, um, we turn it into a bit of a hangout and we just chat skiing and all sorts. Uh, so Simon, I can see you there, mate. Uh, thanks for joining. Um, give a little bit of an update and then we'll uh, dive into hanging out. Um, so the last couple of weeks, uh, I've been talking a bit about uh, my process right now in applying for permanent residency and the journey that I'm taking. It has been a little bit stressful. Um, there has been a bit of an update in this last week. And so the crux of that is, is that um, I need to currently apply for an extension on my IEC work holiday visa to tie me over until uh, my LMIA, my sponsored work a permit gets sorted out um, and then that allows me to sort of head into the, the permanent residency application in a more clear way. So this is a bit of an added extra step I did not anticipate, um, but, it, but it is where I am. So um, what I've had to undertake in the last week, um, the process in which to do that, you can either do this online or you can do this via post. Um, and uh, I've, my understanding is, is that the best way to go about applying for this visa extension is to do so via via the post. Um, so uh, when you go on to the CIC, the, the Canadian Immigration uh, Centre's page, there's all kinds of forms and stuff that you had to fill out. So I've spent the last week or so preparing everything from, um, you know, work history, um, reasons explaining why I'm a, uh, I'm uh, applying for an extension any uh you know sort of police certificates if you've been abroad in places for more than six six months it's it's kind of like reapplying for my work holiday visa all over again in terms of all the forms i've got to prepare um and so that is about to get sent off on monday or tuesday the important thing about this is that the moment i have sent this off um, you're on something that is called implied status. Um, so with implied status, um, it allows you to work in Canada even while your application is being processed, um, even if your current visa expires. Um, now, obviously, if you want to know um, more about that in regards to your own situation or just about potentially you know applying for visas in future definitely do your own research but that's where i'm at right now and so that's about to sign off and, and this is good because then what this means is that then i can stop worrying about the upcoming next four to five weeks where my current visa expires on the end of september um and yeah for the last couple of weeks i've kind of been freaking out thinking i've got to start handing in my um you know my notice to my landlords and start figuring out about selling cars and all kinds of stuff but um yeah because we're waiting on an lmia um and and what an lmia is is a, is a labor market a labor market something assessment um i forget exactly what that is how we uh pronounce that exactly labor market impact assessment and um that's in regards to your uh, it's a form of of work sponsored um permit there and it's taking quite a long time for that to arrive that that went in uh, a couple of months ago so th this whole extension is to basically tie me over give me some more breathing room so that i don't have to worry in the short term and then you know 
normally these extensions apparently right now the processing time is 145 days so you know that's several months and i then as soon as this goes in on tuesday i don't have to worry about the winter that was another thing that was on my mind because i'm thinking about all kinds of things there i'm thinking about work i'm thinking about the channel the content i'm like gosh what am i going to do all of a sudden if i'm not going to be here in revelstoke like what am i going to do in terms of like creating content for you guys um uh so yeah that it, in short it is going to be okay but um i wanted to just point out a couple of things um that, that is important i think with this process is definitely um you've you you do have to be a little bit savvy and navigate the system and it does help to have someone with experience with immigration experience to talk to um it doesn't necessarily have to be a lawyer it can be a consultant and i think the consultants are can be a lot cheaper i mean it's always handy to check if your work also has any any form of um compliance or uh immigration personnel who can who can support there so this is just going to enable me as a as an avid ski lover to be here for the very least for another winter in revelstoke and potentially even longer um because things are going really well here right now and i guess that was it because right now there's not really much else to kind of update you guys on on the process but um you know <laughs> let's let's jump into the hangout that was it like i just wanted to start things off and get into it and there's my key guys are here this is great so we've got simon simon's in how are we mate good to good to have you in on a sunday um yeah what's been what's been happening mate what are your what are your plans for the winter i know you've talked a little bit about somewhere and i wonder if uh, james is going to jump on actually because he's going to be based there and look who finally made it <laughs> brad you're here brad how's it going man what's new <laughs> yeah hey simon happy to be here mate great to see brad bringing the ride vibes as well yeah well he's been saying he was going to jump on for a couple of weeks here now um and kept on forgetting to set his alarm like you did so good to have you boys both on here um yeah it's it's a tricky one because all the guys like who i know from you guys i'm like consciously aware we're all in different time zones so it i don't know i don't know if there's ever going to be a right time where we can all get on but uh yeah i mean this is what 6 p.m where you are i think simon and brad what time is it where you are now bud i'm doing well buddy just enjoying the rest of the summer and prepping for an epic season ahead it, it's not long to go right it's like give or take 100 days now um and so we're over the hump of summer i don't know about you mate i'm over summer i'm, I'm so over it i want there to be powder I'm, I'm i'm done with like this red smoke and fires all around bc right now um but you brad like i've seen some of your stuff there on the lakes man that looks like real good fun real good fun that does um yeah what are your plans for your season brad you made any plans yet Simon's going to be in France a few times this winter. Awesome stuff. Um, yeah, mate. It's, uh, I'm hoping that France gets a better better winter this year, right? Um, you know, hopefully they get a, a good start and get a good snow base down. Um, been a tricky couple of years. So I, I know you talked about getting the, the – I think you'd said the big pass – Connecting uh, Samoyen and Flane. Um, what is that? It's uh, the Grand Massif, right? I think you were going to get the Grand Massif pass. Where else, man? Where? What, what are the plans have you, you thought of? So 1 p.m. where you are, buddy. Okay, that's a nice time. That's a nice time sitting there having your, having your lunch. 
maybe having a beer. It's a bit too early for me to have a beer here. Um, middle of the day on Sunday, usually out and about. Oh, right. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a tricky one. So if you're 1 p.m., what's that? That's 11, 12. Okay, so you're three hours ahead now. Right, okay. Good to know. Yeah, I'm thinking thinking about these live streams ahead in the, the winter more and more now and thinking when I can slot those in. And I don't know if a Saturday, Saturday evening hangout might be a cool one, you know, around 5 p.m., 6 p.m. here. Um, although that might leave out the, U, the UK audience. We'll see. Probably in December. Oh, Breckenridge. Breckenridge to kick off the season. Nice. Um, what's Breckenridge like nowadays? But I've not, I mean, I, I went there as a kid. Um, I remember absolutely loving Breckenridge. Um, and yeah, the thing I rem the thing I remember the most, I think, was it Breckenridge or Winter Park where they have the, um, you know, the Forrest Gump restaurant? Is it Bubba Gump? Bubba Gump? Oh, some great food. I just remember that as a little kid. Don't really remember the skiing. I remember, I think, being in Breck and like one night they had 30 inches of, of snow overnight. And that was huge, huge amount of snow. But yeah, man, I'd love to head out to Colorado again sometime. At new NY and MI in full season. Um, new York and Michigan. Sorry, that's my uh, that's, that's a that's a question mark, Brad. That's my Britishness not not knowing what that is. But Utah, man, Utah. Oh, hey, if they get as good a season as they got last year, like spring skiing will be like the harder winter. Like I can't believe place was it Mammoth that was like still open in like the middle of June. That was that was insane. Um, that was an insane uh, winter for them. I think. Utah and California kind of hogged all the snow last year. Winter's easier as I'm inside more often. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably uh probably my thing there, man. Um oh man, the now the chat's popping off. I've got to get caught up here. Uh Simon's gonna be heading to the Grand Massif in France. We'll just base yourself in a different resort for each of the trips. Looking forward to making some content from there as my last trip was pre my YouTube days. Oh wow. Oh nice. So we're we're really winding it back there, mate. Yeah, it's a it's a good area. And I mean, where are what it's not just what where else you got? You got Lake Caraz, Morion, and sixth. Sixth, I've never been to. I don't really know Lake Lake Caros, but Morion's cool. There's a really, you know, it's like I don't know at the bottom there. There's a really nice little bar at the bottom. Um, it was so weird once. I was like on a family trip there, and just came to the bottom of the piece and like bumped into one a mate from from uni just so randomly. And it's it's cool. I mean, obviously all the Brits love to go to that area. So yeah, man, that would be really exciting. I'm looking forward to seeing some content there, man. You've been busy with your hiking vids this uh, this summer, man, churning them out. Breckenridge is the dream. They have everything under blue skies and perfect snow. Nice. Yeah. Is that your whole crew there, Brad? You're going to just, you, is that a solo trip or are you all heading out that way? Do you have any plans to, to get out to any other Canadian resorts this winter, Matt? Um, I don't have plans yet, and I really do need to commit. Um, I'll kind of touch on that in a minute, but I would like to I'd like to go and check out um Whitewater and and Red Mountain. These are two resorts, probably about two, three hours away from here. You have to take the, the ferry to Nakusp. Um, and they're near to sort of Nelson and Castlegar. Very similar to Revelstoke in the sense of like, you know, not huge, massive mountains, but an insane amount of powder and a really cool uh snow community um i would like i said this to myself last year and i didn't plan very well i would like to actually really try and get into the touring a lot more this year um uh which actually does remind me because uh, i think what i need to start out with is actually building up my um touring gear um, and I think I need to start with a new set with a set of touring boots, which I don't have, and then build it out from there. There's actually quite a lot of ski discounts right now in the center of town, like 40, 50 percent off, um, you know, because we're right on the edge of Rogers Pass here where they have some of the most insane, um, insane touring um, to do. 
And I think the reason why I'm leaning towards that is because I only have like two set amount of days off, right? And there's it's it's kind of hard to plan trips around that. There are a couple of stat days, stat holidays, which I get, um, you know, throughout that winter as part of work. Um, and I would like to maybe, and if I could plan a trip out towards Red and and Castle. Uh, out towards red and white water and stick that third stat day on the edge of a, of a, my days off that could work. Um, you know, again, though, probably the closest resort is silver star in Vernon. It's like a two hour drive. So, you know, I can easily make a trip up there if the weather's good. Um, you know, so, and I think that's more just, you know, a, it's a cool little town actually to, to go and check out. Um, but yeah, we'll see, we'll see what early winter does as well though. Right. Cause you know how last year I headed out to big white for a day or two, not much was open, but it was open before Revy. So if I can sneak in a couple of turns early somewhere else, that'd be cool. Uh, Simon's asking, Brad, have you seen Ryan Napton doing his thing in Breck? Sorry, New York and Michigan. Yeah. Okay. New York and Michigan. Yeah. Okay. Got you. Find it, I find it crazy that actually you can do skiing in New York. I'd love to check that out sometime. Uh, Simon, absolutely. Napton is the man. Who Who's Ryan Napton? Now oh, I've got to Google who Ryan Napton is, guys. This is the thing. Like when you're working full time in this industry, like it's like, like I, you barely get to catch up with all the players. Um, and there's some of the latest stuff. Uh, I mean, we've got the free ride world tour stage around here, plus the what's the big competition? Okay, now I see who Ryan Napton is. Okay, snowboarder, internet personality, according to Google. Uh, where are we? Sikt is tiny, but there is a beautiful four kilometer route from Flane into Sikt called Cascades. Nice. Ah, I think I think I might have uh, heard of that one. Sick, fourteen k. That's a that's a good amount, man. Find an instructor and ask them to help you with a Solomon discount. They do some decent touring gear, and their skis boards normally come with custom skins. Good value. Yeah, there's a couple of um, good perks, right? I'm I'm actually part of a um like one of the perks of being a an employee at the resort. Um, you like you kind of get in with people who know certain uh, sites and sort of deals and, and various codes that give you access. So I've, I've, I do kind of have one there, but uh, funny thing is, is that actually I, I wonder if there's some pretty good deals. I, I think there's some better deals actually just hanging around town right now. But um, for example, like my current, so the Solomon QST blanks that I had last year pretty much ruined them in that first three weeks with all the, shitty sort of uh hangouts uh the trees and the rocks that were still lingering around or i think i kind of turned them into rock skis but th that same ski is on it's, it's a, around about 550 bucks right now but it d doesn't have a binding so like i, I want to get the whole thing kitted out with you know the probably like the solomon switch binding so i can go from alpine to touring um but yeah, I need to. My priority was to get this whole thing with my immigration kind of sorted, and then start real planning towards winter now, as we're coming out of the summer. Um, oh, hey, Joe, Joe is here. Sorry for not joining earlier. Been sn been snowboarding this week. What you been snowboarding? Where? Indoors? Dry slope? Where, man? Joe. So so Joe here. Um, Simon, this is this is. I'm glad this happened. So Joe is actually heading out to Flame. Um, so you guys, uh, sorry, Sam Wayne, you guys might bump into each other. Hey, man. Ryan Napton carving videos are insane. Okay, well, I got to check some of these out after the uh, after the live stream. It's going to really, really annoy me for not remembering what the name of this big competition is that's in Revelstoke. Um, and it was huge last year. Like all the all the top snowboarders 
um, from like North America. Uh, what was it? Natural Selection Tour. That was it. Yeah. Um, so it was like all these jewels on Red Bull TV. And it was, yeah, it was sort of sponsored with Yeti and then Red Bull. And it was, it was big. Um, they, they did it off in a big sort of part of our uh, in Rogers Pass, you know, all sort of hellied up there. Um, and yeah, I remember there being a little bit of controversy around sort of the two main athletes on who actually should have won it and who actually did. Um, um and it's coming back this year. Um, I actually know where some of it's going to be, and it's going to be a little bit closer to the resort, which will be exciting. I think I think it's coming closer. I don't know. Natural Selection Tour. Who are the athletes? Travis Rice. That was like the main one. That's a shame. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, indoor centres. Nice. So uh, where would that have been? We've been at Manchester or down south, Hemel Hempstead, uh, Tamworth. Hi, Simon. I'm going to San Moyen next season. Nice. Natural selection. Yeah, it was big. It was it was a big kind of like talk of the town. And um uh yeah it was caught a couple of glimpses of it on the streams they actually i mean you know skiing's kind of like my more thing and i kind of grew up with the racing right and last year they just announced that they actually cancelled the fis stage now in lake louise like i don't they're not i don't think they but can afford to hot, put it on which is a shame man because lake louise was a huge huge event in in the calendar uh, nice, Joe. You going out for the season? I love Sam Wyan. Nice. Let's get you guys. Let's, maybe you guys hook up and get uh, get a get a bit of a, a day ski, uh, riding out there. So we've got four, a couple of a couple of people on the chat right now, which is awesome, guys. So yeah, just keep keep, keep putting in uh, keep putting in the questions. <clears throat> One thing I wanted to talk about, I wanted to kind of announce to you guys. Um, you might have noticed over the last couple of day or two is I've launched um, some channel memberships um, for two reasons really. The main, <clears throat> the main, the main reason was I was kind of looking for uh, more ways to engage with with you guys, um, especially with these live streams. Um, and so the, there's two different tiers of membership here. We got uh, Nomad and Season Air, and and each one has a couple of different perks. Uh, the main one giving you guys some like custom badges to mark like memberships with the channel um, and, and also emo emojis that you can use in these live chats. So I got these all custom designed, um, kind of went with the, the badges along the theme of like the, the different ski runs and, and the levels there. So, um, you know, by doing that, it just allows to support the channel a little bit. So, um, yeah, if you guys want to support the channel in any way, um, you guys get a load of shout outs by doing that and uh, it'd be much appreciated. Let's dive back into this. Let's see. Uh, my mum's cousin got a business called Alps Accommodation and our probs work with them. Nice. So Simon Joan, we've got a good, got a good uh, thing going here. Yeah, it looks like a, a good business that does, Joe. Um, <clears throat> basically, when we decide to do a, Bra a Bramski Vlogs Europe hangout, we're all going to come crash. In uh, in Samoyen, I think Joe. I think that's the way this is going. Uh, Simon's going to be out there Jan, Feb, and April. So yeah, definitely going to get some laps in. Awesome. Yeah, that will be sick, guys. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, I wish I could actually be there. Who knows? If everything falls flat on its face out here, I'll come out and, and ski with you guys. Uh, 
Uh, there we go. Brad's chiming in here. How are we doing, buddy Joe? Good, thanks. How are you? These are all snowboarders. This is this is a snowboarders chat right now. I've just realized that. <clears throat> you get your Canada visa and thing you needed. Um, <clears throat> kind of not quite. Um, I mean, the crux of it is, is that like right now I've got to apply to extend my work holiday visa uh, just to give me, put me on like implied status, which means I can stay here and still work while things are getting processed. But at the same time, I'm also uh, with work that they're, they're working on like a, a specific work sponsorship application. Um, so hopefully when that gets all sorted, then I'm on a fixed two year um, with them. So it allows me for two years and then I can provide, uh, then I can move up to PR but by getting this application in to extend the visa, like I'm putting it, sending it in the mail on like Monday. Right. And then that immediately allows me to be here. And after my actual current visa expires in September, and it's taking like 145 days to process those extension applications. So basically it means I'm good for the winter at least, which, which is more important. Snowboarding to skiing. Right. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know, mate. What's going on here? Are you feeling outnumbered by snowboarders, Matt? Come to the dark side. Dude, it's not going to happen. It's never going to happen. I actually had one lesson of snowboarding in Marybell, like in my early teen years, right? Um, and it was kind of like a an act of rebellion at that time against just sort of what everyone else in the family doing. And also just like curiosity, right? But I spent 90% of that lesson on my ass and it was the the, the most unfun thing ever guys so no it's it's never going to happen i have a lot of respect actually for the people who can do both <laughs> stop ganging up and up on me everybody's ganging up on me this is uh <laughs> that's not started out skiing but made the transition i'll come back to the light lighter side brad come on it's, it's it's fun over here we can actually we actually spend a lot more time skiing rather than sat on the side of the slope with our skis I hope to upload a lot this year. Yeah, Joe, man, don't don't put yourself under any pressure, like in your first year starting out making videos, mate. Just um, take your time, you know, um, and just, yeah, take it a video at a time. And if you can get into some form of schedule that works, that that, that helps. As long as you're riding snow, you're good with me, planks or board, I don't care. You got to keep up though, Brad. I'll teach you, mate. Just need the right instruction. If I, I already know how to sit down though, Simon. I know how to be sat down on the floor. You know, I, I learned that as a kid. Every good snowboarder was forced to ski as a kid. <laughs> I didn't know that. Simon, have you got your qualifications? I'm getting step up, step ons this morning. Nice. I couldn't agree more. Well, if you were made to ski as a kid, you were brought up well, and you've just strayed from the path. You're you're all very bad human beings. So I can keep up with smoker friends. skis are hella fast though yeah i think that's one of the things i like about skiing so much mate is actually that it feels a lot more dynamic you know uh, and i've seen a lot of ankle like an, an injuries from snowboarding because you're just you're, you're fixed in and yes you are and yes you are fixed in with um skis obviously on the bindings but it's a lot more there's a there's a lot more i think kinetics and movement with your entire your tire body right so any impact is kind of shared around but yeah i've always i, always, I loved going fast you know especially so when i did my race training courses that was kind of like when i was really getting into watching the racing and 
I was like, oh, you know, I want to be by one. You wanted to be Bodie Miller or be um, Shemi Olcott, you know. And problem with that is, is racing is hella expensive. So yeah, keep up with the skier friends. Yeah, you've got to keep up, especially on a powder day. I mean, there's no friends on a powder day, right? Uh, did my KZ and I've worked in Canada, Europe, and Australia, even at the snow center briefly where you were today, Joe. Nice. Yeah, Simon's been around a bit, man. Nice, nice. Hope to be a qualified instructor in a season's time doing snow school. Does that mean we're going to see you on some skis then, Joe? You're going to be teaching. You're going to. You're going to have to get on a set of skis to uh, to teach there. Got to make. You got to take take on some 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 skiing as well as snowboarding to uh, make yourself more employable. <laughs> Content idea: Matt comes to Samoyan and learns to snowboard whilst Joe and Simon laugh and eat popcorn. Mate, I'm all over that. I, I'm. I am all over that. If if I can. Take some time at some point, you know, if I, I, if I would get into a situation where I'm now flexible to make those trips, I'd love to. I mean, my, my, my vision with this channel would be at some point for it to become my main, uh, I don't want to call it a job, but you know what I mean, right? Like the, my main activity. Um, but something's got to pay the bills right now. So who knows? A couple of years' time, we'll see. But keep keep churning out the content and keep uh, focusing on the passion and hanging out with you guys. But I love that idea. That's all kinds of things. Um, I I was I was thinking like hypothetically, okay, if anything doesn't play out here, what do I do? You know, this winter, you know, let's say I'm back at win in in Europe, um, and I really wanted to head back to to Austria for a long period of time just because I loved it there, and they have quite a few really good multi-activity multi-resort passes which simon i know that's your period of expert area of expertise right especially with switzerland um and yeah i was looking at things like the tyrol pass the the salzburger land and and yeah just uh you know if that was gonna if this was all gonna fail i'd lo love to have done something like you know traveling traveling around the europe resorts by train and you know checking everything out and doing some meetups with with you guys like yeah great uh, yeah i agree joe but maybe you guys can can go up and, and do something you know th this summer anyway even if it's uh sorry this winter you know even if it's just a day of riding and uh checking it out i might might have been subscribed to you for almost two years and still loving the videos dude uh, I, I really appreciate you supporting that for such a long period of time. Um, yeah, it's it's been a bit of a journey <laughs> so far, but it's um, yeah, YouTube is this beast, and yeah, I appreciate that you've been so consistently following it for such a long time. And yeah, I hope for you know for your enjoyment, that I can keep getting better at making videos and. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like we're building a bit of a community here and that's kind of what I've been wanting to do and figure out, trying to figure out how to do it uh, since last winter, really. I mean, I hope for you guys' sake now, all you guys hanging out in Europe, I hope you get a good season. Brad, have you guys got like um, confirmed season dates yet? Like your start dates over in the Midwest, Michigan, New York? What's it looking like there? I don't even know if Europe's confirmed theirs yet. We've got ours confirmed for Revelstoke, um, 2nd of December to the 14th of April. Um, yeah. I'm hoping we we get we actually get some snow in winter this time. I got to move this camera because I keep looking down. Keep looking at my screen. Feels like we are building the group here, and it's nice to be here. Nice man, I'm glad you you feel the same way. 
Um, mm. It's cool to have a couple of the other content creator guys also hanging out on here. So, yeah. What stood out about Austria? I'm yet to get there. <laughs> oh, where do I begin? Um, I found that the overall Alpine experience, it just felt more true. Like having grown up and, and, and skied so much in, in, in France, where, let's be honest, there is this kind of like love hat relationship between the British and the French, right? When, when you go out to Austria, like immediately, first of all, like the, 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 the aesthetics, you know, like the look of the, the ski towns, it just feels more like, yeah, it, it's that, I guess it's that stereotypical look of a mountain town, right? Bavarian, you know, with the, with the pastel colored housings and the, the valleys and the trees. And it, it just, yeah, it, it, I don't know. It just felt more mountain like from minute one, but then like when you get into it as well, like the, the communities in those towns were, were really, had a really good feel to it. And, and that, as you can probably tell, means quite a lot to me. That's important to me. The snow was, I mean, the networks were really good, not crowded, uh, efficient. I mean, you, it, it, in, in a way, it's a lot like Switzerland. But what I'd say is different there is that um, it's a lot cheaper, but you've still got the the, the on-mountain food far better quality than, um, you know, France. The beer is good. It's local beer a lot of the time. It's like local breweries that have been around for hundreds of years. Um, obviously, the app race scene, the atmosphere is there. It's, it's, it's so unique in Austria, and it's just this perfect, perfect blend, um, you know, just sort of dancing to silly music. And again, it's like that. It's one thing I do miss about here, right, is that one thing I miss about there, sorry, is that at the end of the day here, <laughs> There's there's not really like that vibe so much of of going and and really talking about how good the day was, you know, on the mountain and then talking about next day. Um, I mean, the resort is like ten minutes outside of town, so you can't. You know, if you're driving, obviously you got to play it sensible and go and have drinks in town. Um, but yeah. Just, uh, you know, and really easy to get to in Austria, man. Like, everything is so easy to get to, all these different resorts. Um, no start dates yet mm -hmm. over in the Midwest, but probably wary, wary December. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you use the Epic Pass uh, for Brad? Sometimes we get lucky and we get out in November, but most of the time it's middle of December. Yeah, um, that was it. Like my first winter here, I, we, the season actually opened December the no November twenty eighth or something like that, which was real early. Um, so uh, yeah, I don't know. It's tricky because last winter we didn't get any snow on the tops in, 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 in all in autumn. And when you go to start going hiking on our slopes, you realize um, how much actual snow is needed to build up a layer before you can actually really open. Like you're talking two meters, like in some of those areas, especially in the powder bowls. So. Where are you from, buddy? Where is Joe? Joe's in Bath, originally from South London, been snowboarding for six to seven years now, but really focusing on my snowboarding. Awesome. How about you, Brad? Yeah, Brad, are you from the, the Michigan area or did you sort of move there? I can't, I don't know if I know this. You said you'd give me a goggle sock for my question, but I've already got one. Could you give it to someone else as I don't have another one? Oh, mate, okay, yeah, sorry. I, I, I kind of have... Uh, not kind of lost track a little bit of who I have and haven't sent out to. I mean, I, I bought a bulk of them, you know, pre last winter and I'm down to my last few now and yeah, giving them out. But I think, I think everybody on the, who's been commenting so far has one. Like I sent, sent one out to Simon. I sent one out to Brad, which I hope you guys got. Uh, let me know if you didn't and I will send one out. But yeah, if anybody else is watching right now, like I, I know we've got a couple of uh, other people watching. Um, 
what I want to try and do is obviously give away, give a, a free goggle sock away on each of these ones for anyone who comes up with like a real good question. So if you want a bit of free merch and you haven't put anything in the comments yet, stick them in. Michigan. Nice. Yeah, yeah, Joe, definitely check out some of Brad's videos. Um, his, uh, you know, the the, the Michigan, I, I guess the ski scene out there is pretty unique. It's it's not like anything in Europe. Um, you know, seems like a real cool um, experience. Uh, definitely would uh, be keen to do a trip in there sometime. Nice, nice. Simon, you received your goggle sock. Good stuff. Brad, did you? Brad, did you? Did did you get a goggle sock from me? Did that come through? Also, what about the ride vibes merch? I've seen some of those t-shirts and, and hats, man. They look good. Uh, yeah, we'll do after the stream. You did get the goggle sock. Love it. Forgot to include clips in our edits. This, this. Oh, no worries, man. Don't, don't. I mean, you don't have to put it in your videos, whatever. But um, yeah, I just thought I'd. I saw some of those videos where it's like one minute you're in, uh, you're in rain at the bottom, and then you're at snow right at the top. So yeah, something to cover those goggles. I thought could come in handy. Um, from Michigan, by the way. I'm not actually too sure if I want to put in another order for these goggle socks just yet. Um, I mean, I've pretty much given them out for free this year, and I kind of wanted to sell them. Um, starting to unlock a couple of perks, actually, with the channel, so I, I don't know. I also maybe want to think about a T-shirt. I mean, we've got a local uh, apparel clothing company in town, and I don't know. I don't know what you guys would think if there's any appetite for that for some for a, a Bramski style merch. Had a couple of ideas with it. I'll check out your channel. Yeah, man, definitely go check out each other's channels. Uh, you'll enjoy them. Ride Vibes channel is so upbeat. It is. It's a, it's a cool vibe. Thanks, Joe. Ditto. Right vibes we just make for ourselves and give out free to peeps we like. Expect something this year, my dudes, in this chat. Oh, awesome. Dude, I'm looking forward to that. Nice. Yeah, that's what it is like. You know, I, I think I'm I'm with you there. It's like at, at this stage, right, and you're just trying to grow and, and, you know, build some connections and supporters, right? And it's like... Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know how you feel about it. I, I do feel a bit funny right now, like asking people to pay for things linked to my channel. Um, and, you know, I do like to give things, you know, especially like giving out those goggle socks, like it's, it didn't cost a lot, but um, yeah. Yeah. Man. It's cool. Like I love the, the ride vibes colors you know very like a it's kind of like a neon retro vibe to it which i, I dig any tip any tips for starting a channel um i mean dude honestly like at, at this stage i would just not over complicate it and just s start filming uh you know what what you see like come up with the one tip I think I mentioned this before is maybe come up with four or five video ideas, go out and film them all, film them, edit them, and then schedule, schedule uploading them for like the next four weeks. So for, for example, let's say, I don't know, you want to do a video on, your journey to be an instructor why why sam why why you've chosen sam yn you know what the skiing is like in um in sam yn you know all the like, those are just ideas i'm spitballing right go out and film them 
edit them. And then when you want, you can actually schedule the up when they go live. So you could schedule them for the next three, next four weeks on a Wednesday, for example, right? And 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 what you've then got is you've then got a, a, a month gap where you've already got content going out and you can go out and start creating more content. And what you're doing there is you're then creating this blog, which allows you to um, post consistently, right, for, for, for a long time. Yeah, shorts. Oh, I, I, Brad, I don't know how, I don't know how you feel about that. I mean, shorts, it definitely gets you subscribers quick. Um, and subscribers used to be the thing, right? That, 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 that used to be what I guess sort of, um, help really grow channels, you know, that like subscribers was what helped with, you know, the, the Casey Neistat's and the Logan Paul's of YouTube, but it's a whole different ball game now. And I kind of get quite disillusioned by it all. And, and I mean, you know, it shorts really helped me last winter, actually just chiming out like bits of ski content, you know, just stuff from the editing floor that didn't fit in a vlog, you know, just, just hitting a run, right? Like, you know, hitting a sick powder line and, and, or, you know, going through the trees or whatever, you know, that's, a 30 second, 45 second video. And you could, the beauty about that is that, yeah, you could post those like seven days a week. Right. So that, that's another thing to think about there, Joe actually is, um, yeah, with those, let's say again, you go out and you film those four videos, right. And as you film those four vlogs, you've got all these cut up stuff from the editing floor. You could chop up, a bunch of skiing stuff within that and turn it into to to shorts um yeah yeah they are pretty hot youtube seems to be i don't know i feel like youtube somehow is kind of i don't know i, I think it's it's put a lot of attention on shorts at the expense of the the longer form videos that the vlog style do you know what i mean that's just my opinion anyway. Don't know how you feel about it, Simon. I know we were texting a little bit about frustrations with YouTube and stuff. Really good advice. Yeah, and Joe, mate, like if, if we're going to have like people like Simon and Brad on, like you can ask us questions. <coughs> Sorry. You can ask us questions anytime. Oh, we've got a new person to the channel here. We've got Ollie. Thanks, man. Thanks for commenting. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Let me just get a drink of water here. <clears throat> Saw this smoke from the wildfires. Like, it's been going on for ages, and it gets inside the house as well now. It's like, <clears throat> had a croaky voice for weeks. Okay. Do you think, uh, just thinking out loud here, as you put up the initial videos, then put shorts up, to draw people to the page, only a thought. Well, I think they've actually proved in 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 some way that it's like if you if you post a short on the same day you've posted a, a longer form video, like it actually does subtract or takes away from some of the attention of or, or like bringing traffic to that longer form video. I, I think that's what I've heard, but um, yes, shorts do draw people to the page. They, they, it, in in a they draw people in to the page in a way that, I mean, they make a lot more people subscribe. Like if you check out the analytics, like there's a lot of people that watch the videos now and they will subscribe from it, for sure. But subscribers don't necessarily guarantee like um a returning viewer like let's be honest if you if you if you you have a you if you have a youtube account or you, like you don't even let's say you just watch youtube how many accounts do you sub subscribe to and how many of those do you go back to and watch like on a consistent basis do you know like maybe two or three and you might be subscribed to like 50 over X amount of years. 
Our long-term edits take a lot of time and we cut a lot of footage. Shorts are fun for more real-time stuff and things that don't make the cut. Yeah, that, that, that's, that, that's the way to look at it. Um, I don't know. It is frustrating sometimes, though, when you look at some of the shorts content that is out there, right? And I don't know, some of it you kind of think it's absolutely ridiculous, but it has hundreds of thousands, if not millions of views for a 15 second clip. And then you go out like you, Brad, Simon, we all go out and we we spend hours filming these vlogs and they're not like Casey Neistat HD stuff, but we put a lot of time and effort into them. We're still trying to figure it out. And then you go live with it um, and it gets like 50, 50 views or 100 views. And it, it, I mean, then there's the seasonality thing to take into account with our type of stuff, right? You know, obviously, like any stuff that we post now, whether it's like being out on the water or hiking, is not going to do as well as it would be when we start posting winter content. Which, you know, I'll, you know, I guarantee you that all of our videos, the numbers will start to increase as we get closer to winter. A happy medium is nice. Uh, got to go to dinner now, guys. See you around. Joe, thanks for joining in, man. That's been a really cool little hangout. Uh, we'll see you uh, probably next week. Have a good one. I'm starting to experiment with shorts more. I prefer long-form content, but finding the balance is key. I think the main thing is consistency. When I have run out, when I have a run of weekly videos, I get more views. Yeah, dude, that's it. And um, yeah, the only reason why I'm not out hiking videos right now is just because of the smoke but like live streams i can keep doing and yeah it's um yeah you're right man like consistency is definitely a thing that drives it see you joe fun to listen to your insights on the youtube stuff you obviously focus on this and know a lot more about it than i do um i guess like i'm i'm, I'm really i really want this sort of this this channel, the, the the ski channel and the community to really build and i really want to you know this to to grow man and i'm trying to learn as much as possible but it, if you focus on on the stuff behind the scenes too much it does get to you like I've, i often feel like youtube changes the goalposts a lot um and then yeah i kind of have to bring it back to just thinking about the enjoyment of creating a ski video you know just like not overcomplicate it it was fun man this is fun yeah but we, i mean i'm gonna keep going i'm not going anywhere today so far, I think we've we've taken it. The longest one live stream so far has been like an hour and 15. I wonder if we can get to two hours today. We've got six people, six or seven people watching right now. Hey, guys, um, if you just join in, um, there is a chance to win a bit of free merch, a free goggle sock if you post a, a good, you know, if I, I deem your question, you know, good enough. So smash like everybody. Yeah, man. Ollie, thanks for that question, by the way, mate. That was a that was a good one back there. I don't know if you're still watching. Um, are you new? Are you, I think you're new to the channel, aren't you, mate? What what what's uh, what's your story, mate? Are you skier, snowboarder? Uh, yeah, let me know about who you are, guys. What what's your thing? No, I'm not leaving for dinner. I'm not leaving. No, Joe Joe went for dinner. I don't know why where Joe's gone for dinner. Joe Joe's gone off for a for a nice beer somewhere. I'm not leaving. <clears throat> Might have to put the kettle on for a cup of tea, though. It's getting to 11 o'clock. Yeah, I think a bit too much sometimes about all the YouTube stuff like tags and SEO and stuff. I find the thumbnails really hard. I don't know how you find that, Brad. You know, it's like you go out and you film all this st stuff. And then when you get to the editing floor and you, you're making this video and you've probably already got, I mean, I kind of have a title idea by that time. and But then I'm like, most of the time I'm just taking screen grabs, you know, like because I, I I'm always skiing by myself. I don't have someone to take a photo and yeah. What's the opening date for Revy this year? Oh, the opening date is 
December the 2nd, um, and then they close on April the 14th. So that's the second weekend. Uh, second weekend in April, yeah. Um, yeah. February will be the busiest. That's when we'll get all the U.S. stuff. Um, yeah. Still here, living in the U.K. Came across your channel a few months ago, or was it last winter? So quite new anyway. I'm a skier, spent five weeks in Fernie in 2018. Your videos remind me of the insane powder in BC. Ollie, man, thanks for thanks for coming across the channel, man. It's it's great to have a um have a, a new person hanging up here. And uh yeah, tell me about your time in Fernie because I've I've heard a lot of good things about Fernie, a lot of similarities in terms of like the Revelstoke community. Um and yeah, I think it's a little bit far away from here, but I've been told I should make a journey out there. Um, yeah, so your five weeks in Fernie, what was that? Was that just like a big trip? What 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 was all, all of that, man? Welcome. Uh yeah, hoping we get a good a good year to bring you some good powder vids. The dream. Does it normally open up with a full mountain? Um not always. So last year was a weird one. So obviously, so last year we actually didn't have a good, a good amount of snow in the autumn, but they actually worked hard to get the last spike open, which is basically just this long snaky run that allow so that they could technically say, okay, you can ski from top to bottom. And they worked really hard to do that. There was snow across the mountain, but if you watch the first video from last winter, like you were skiing on like on those lower sections it looked powdery but actually you were skiing on tr bamboo shoots and tree shoots and rocks and i completely killed my skis in that first week and um yeah whereas but it's weird because whereas like the sea the winter before that when i was here um there was, i felt like there was a lot more snow across the whole mountain but we were downloading so it w they wouldn't let us ski from top to bottom yeah, it's it's it, it's a it's a weird weird mix. Gavin's joined the chat. Hey, buddy, how 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 are things where you are, mate? Yeah, I'm curious to know a bit more about Fernie. Definitely want to know a bit more about Fernie. funny is cool it was a it was originally and still is a mining town and the resort is 10 minutes from the town itself it's a bowl skiing setup so i imagine similar to revy and similar vibes yeah that, that's that kind of like coincides with what i've heard man and um yeah i know uh i know a few people who who actually moved from fernie to to revelstoke um just googling a couple of pictures now um I think it's one of the things I love about I've loved so much about being in BC is these uh, the, the the look and the feel of some of these smaller like ski towns, right? You know that the, the, they've got the, some of these these old high street, you know, like brick buildings that have been there and uh, they've kind of gone through the growth of the town and um, you know having being a little bit away from the natural resort does have its advantages i feel um yeah proper jealous five weeks in fernie would be epic 
Gavin, welcome to the stream. Party in here today, boys. It is a party, isn't it? It's becoming a right good party. Maybe next week I started an hour later again, and then, then that gives me an excuse to crack open a beer around the middle of the day. Also, Brad or Simon, I could add you into the stream. I don't know if you guys want to do that now or we do that some other time. I don't know if you've got your StreamYard stuff set up. I could add you in. That could be quite fun. Might be dangerous. <clears throat> Always a party when there's new Bramski content. Thanks, Gavin. Yeah, man. Now, it's cool. We were just chatting actually before you came on, Gavin, about you know just sort of building up this uh yeah this little community here and everybody's just chatting about skiing and it's awesome because we've got we've got people in the us on here we've got people in the uk we've got people who um you know have skied in in europe in in australia in in canada and it's cool everybody's sort of sharing their own different experiences and you know ollie ollie um Sorry, Simon and and Brad, Brad from Ride Vibes, they both are content creators as well. So guys, definitely do check out their channels. Bad hair day, but definitely in the future. Okay. Well, no, we should plan this. I I, I definitely think it'd be cool. I mean, how do you feel about that, Brad? What what about we we plan one live stream one week where we get you and Simon to actually join in on this and then we we just hang out with whoever comes to watch, you know, get you your sort of fo followers and everything and Maybe sometime in September here and we start just, yeah, have a few beers and look forward to next winter. Fernie is worth the trip. It's a great vibe in the town itself. I was there doing a level one ski instructor course and then returned to the UK and tried to get out to the Alps a few times a year. Would love to just live in the mountains again. You're in the right place, Ollie. This is this is this is a place to to discuss your plans and let us help you figure how how to do that. Um, <clears throat> where do you like to go in the Alps? Um, Joe and Simon are sort of in the region of the Grand Massif this winter. I don't know if you're heading out that way. But yeah, you, have you done a season or? Yeah, what what are your what are your plans there, Ollie? Did you do that with nonstop snow? Ah, I think I've heard of these guys. Actually, I wonder if they do any stuff with us here in Revy. I feel like they do. It's awesome. They seem to do everything, those guys. They do like instructor courses improvement a gap years career breaks that could be fun if everything here in revelstoke goes to goes to crap yeah i i'm, I'm sure i'm sure i've seen them in, in revy i might have just might have sent some emails with them from work i don't know Yeah, Ollie, want to know about your plans, man? What are your what what are your trips for skiing this year? And yeah, how have you thought about how you want to live in the mountains? They don't do instructor courses in Revy, but they 
pass through on their snow safari trips. Okay, that sounds about right. Yeah, the, the, the safari things, it was quite new to me when I first sort of started coming across that because I, I don't know, I don't, I don't really know if they do anything like that in Europe, but that could be fun. Maybe we set up a, maybe we set up a bit of a creator's ski safari thing here. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, the safari thing is like where um, you go and you do two two or three days in one place and then you move on to another resort and you just, you know, you, you get a glimpse of each one, but it gives you a real good, especially in somewhere like Canada where there's all these different places, you get a good taste of different areas. I'm really boring. I basically just skied in the Otsal Valley, very easy fly from Gatwick to Innsbruck on slopes by lunchtime. I've done a bit of early season skiing in Teen, so not very broad in terms of places. That's oh, still pretty good, Ollie, man. I mean, Otsal Valley, that. Oh, let's. What are we looking at in Tyrol area here, right? So, obviously, if you're going into Innsbruck, right next to the Italian border. Um... So is that is that the is that the ski area that is like right above the Innsbruck city? Cuz like every time I've been into every time I've been into Innsbruck you always see like the 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 tourist office pushing the skiing actually next to the city and I kind of feel that could be quite a cool experience actually being based in the city but then going up and skiing. Spent quite a bit of time around Innsbruck and obviously when I worked with Crystal but it's uh, yeah tell me more about that man. Curious to know about the Otsal Valley. Again, that's one of the reasons why I love Innsbruck. Uh, sorry, Austria. It's just like a, you can fly. You only need, you've got two airports to choose from and you can reach everything so easily. Okay, it was nonstop that you spent your time in Fernie. Nice. Spot on there, Simon. Uh, my plan this winter is to have a go at ski touring, found some beginner courses in Chamonix. Does anyone have anywhere they recommend? Dude, funnily enough, I actually did my first ever ski touring course in Chamonix as well. I wonder, I um, actually don't remember who I went with, but um, we were over in the Gentier and yeah, had a bit of an experience for my first time ever like doing a ski touring. Um, actually nearly had to spend the night in a snow hole. It's quite funny that. But that is probably, I mean, if you're going to go and learn to ski tour, Chamonix is definitely probably the best place to do it you know, in terms of the, for the terrain. And you'll definitely have very experienced instructors with you there, mate. Um, just trying to think. Bumped into a French a French couple on a hike the other day and they, they do quite a bit of skiing in La Grave, which I think is another place for the, I guess the touring and the, the sort of the more extreme sports side of thing, if that's where you're leaning to, Ollie. Yeah, dude, it's is it is it hot still in Revy right now? Yeah, dude, it's it's been pretty bad. Like, um, I got a, I, I just, I mean, Friday. The main thing right now is the smoke here in Revy. Like, I don't know if you if you check out my community posts in the last couple of days, you'll actually see see quite a bit of it. Like, it's been real bad. Um, luckily. Uh, I mean, the fire that's burning nearby poses absolutely no threat to the town. It's like north of the dam. It's deep in, um, you know, sort of the, the remote area, about 20 kilometers away. It's about 1,200 hectares big. It's a big fire, but what with the wind, it's just been blowing it. And yeah, I mean, it, dude, it's been like high, 32, 33 degrees Celsius consistently for the last few months. And there's just been no respite. 
we're, we're luckily not as bad as down in Kelowna. I don't know if you've seen what's been going on on West Kelowna the last couple of days, like West Kelowna area, um, Sikamoos, Salmon Arm, like Kamloops, these areas. There's some huge fires burning. West Kelowna got really bad on, on Friday night. I, I know some, some people, uh, some friends from uh, the club that I play with and everything, and they, they had to evacuate. Um, there's been schools that have been lost. It's 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 really bad around there, man. But we're just dealing with smoke, um, so not not healthy really to kind of be outside and doing anything active or or, or filming for that matter. Base base elevation, vertical drop, and what's the peak elevation at, at Ravelstoke? Okay, so well the the actual sort of village. Um, what are we at here? The village is forty. 450 meters. Um, let me let me get this for you. I'll read it all out so you know what, what we're dealing with. <clears throat> all right, the resort, okay, the, the base of the resort is, is, the town's 450, the resort is based at 512 meters. Um, the... Lift access terrain is 1,713 meters. The, the the height of the Stoke chair, which is the highest chair, is 2,225 meters. And the sub-peak, which I hike to quite a bit, is 22,340 meters. So right at the top there, some real good, uh, real good, uh, real good altitude. Over 3,000 ski ball acres. Um, longest run, 15K four powder bowls to choose from and on average we get 10 and a half meters um vertical we have what did i mention vertical lift access right i think that's what i yeah all right what's next what do i got here I like the ski touring around Grement Zinal. Zinal has a free ride zone, so a good mix between in resort and heading out of bounds for the first time. Nice. Gavin, how are the fires? I've been watching the news. The fires are insane. Stay safe. Thanks, man. Yeah, like I say, we're, 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 I mean, we're lucky there's no fire risk. It's just real bad air quality right now. Yeah, a lot of other places, a couple, only a couple of hours away, are in real bad situations. So, um, yeah, it's Canada's a wild place. Like, just trying to explain it to my parents, you know, and it's like I, I give them these updates, and it kind of just freaks them out. They're like, "What? What are your evacuation plans?" And I'm like, "You know, have you got to go back?" And I've thought a couple of times about prepping a prepping a go bag, you know, just in case. Because things can change so quickly, right? And we, you know, it's definitely been the talk of the talk of the town. You know, talking about it in the office, and we're like, "Where would you go?" Do you know, it's like, "Well, you, you I mean, where wherever Stoke is, you've got you've got one highway, and it's like, well, if you go, I guess south on the would it be south or east? One way would take you into where all the fire stuff is, right? It would take you down to Kelowna, to Vernon, Kamloops area." So you don't want to go that way. Um, you could go north of the dam, which is a super long way, I guess, to drop into maybe Vancouver area. Or you would just head into further into the pass and go over maybe into Alberta or, you know, maybe around Golden area in BC. Um, but I, I know there's been some smoke and fires in, in Golden anywhere. So it's there's like, what, 350 active wildfires right now in BC alone. They just declared a provincial state of emergency the other day in BC. So, yeah, that, that kind of puts you into perspective of the situation. It's like the worst on record. Yeah. Hence why I'm over, over the summer. I want my snow. It's Obergurgle, Hot Gurgle, Solden, Otez, uh, and a small area of resorts, but are they are high, so you're almost 100% snowshore. And I think there is a separate pass that you can get for resorts around the Innsbruck area in, in Austria, which is a great idea. Yeah, it is. Obergurgle, Hot Gurgle. Yeah, man, I always heard really good things about there. 
yeah, if I, if I did another Austria trip, that would be on my list for sure. Definitely. Ollie, by the way, at the moment, mate, you're your front runner for this uh, this goggle sock. For the free goggle sock. Digging your digging your engagement here, man. Gavin, I did send out yours um at the start of last week. So yeah, hopefully it's with you when you get back from your holidays. Yeah, I agree. Time for winter. That's one of the best things here on the East Coast. Not many fires around. Yeah. I think that's as well, right? It's just like, it's actually, it's mentally been quite exhausting. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like you're trying to, I mean, I'm I'm exhausted for a billion reasons right now. Obviously, like the immigration is one, but it's like you're, you're, you're constantly, you know, just trying to, you're thinking about it, you're, you're on alert, you know what I mean? Like, it's, you know, you're trying, you know, you want to try and relax and enjoy the outdoors, but you can't. And that that's tough when it's Revelstoke, because Revelstoke is such a beautiful place with all the water and the hiking and the biking and the wildlife. And, but yeah, you just kind of can't right now. Basically, I had my own company in the hope it would provide me with income and flexibility to ski and remote work from um helps in winter however clients are a total pain so after four years i'm stopping oh, i'm sorry to hear that ollie um hopefully man you can get out there i mean there's you know if you're looking at the alps you're looking at europe there are schemes there are um you know i know they are there is a visa system in place now where some companies are going to em employ uk workers um obviously if you i mean if you do happen to have an eu passport you're okay but yeah just have a look out mate i mean the fact that if you've been running a business for a few years that's going to make you pretty employable your smoke is messing up my head over here man is it really coming that far down down there into the midwest I, well in fairness i know it was pretty bad like on the on the east coast of the u.s early season from canada I didn't realize it would still keep going there, but yeah, dude, sorry. There's not much we can do about it right now. Everybody's working hard. I mean, they've got so many firefighters coming in from all over the world as well, right? They've brought in like firefighters from Australia, from Brazil. Like it's a huge operation. So I've taken a new job on a training scheme. Then after a two year period, I'm going to reassess to see if I can find a work mountain balance again. Nice man. Well, it sounds like you've got a couple of things planned there so best of luck but yeah keep um keep letting us know even if it's just a ski trip man thanks for the touring information and tips really helpful that's what this uh, place is here for man everybody's uh, sharing their stuff skip the fall and go straight to winter please actually dude i i i, I, I kind of really like autumn here in in Ravelstoke. But it would be nice if we could like have a you know a big big snowy winter this year. Now autumn autumn's nice and revy like because everything. I don't want to say oh you get the town back, but I guess what I mean is is like it becomes a little bit quieter. Everything kind of settles down a little bit. Um, everybody reassesses and reassesses and I guess just recharges their batteries a bit, and then the season chart starts to change and like Revelstoke's colours with all the forest and you start getting like this, the autumnal red and you get a little bit of that chill and then you start to see a bit of the snow. So you have this like progressive buildup of excitement to, to the winter. And then it's finally here and you're just like, yeah, let's go. I've got to go, but great catch up and stay safe. Nice to speak and meet some of you for the first time. Brad, as always, it's been a pleasure. Simon, man, thanks for joining. Yeah, it's been a been been good having you on this week, man. And hopefully, see you again soon. And yeah, let's tee up uh, something where we get you in on the live stream. Actually, where I was just chatting, um, I'll drop you a message after this. Maybe we can tee it up with Brad. Um, see how we can do do something there. Ollie, so Ollie, if you're still here, mate, you you have won uh, the goggle sock for this week, man. 
yeah, I appreciate you popping in there with uh, with your questions. So um, if you could send an email, um, I'm going to quickly just drop you the the email address here. Uh, if you could email me there and just let me know your address and I'll send you out this free goggle sock for you, man. Something to, to keep your goggles uh, secure and, and clean for this winter. Yeah, thanks for joining, Simon. Let's keep this going, guys. Who's next? That's a pleasure, man. No. Something to say a little bit of a thanks for, for engaging and being a part of the channel. No, man, the chat's been popping off today. It's been a good party, as uh, as Gavin and as Gavin was saying. Yeah. What have you been up to recently? You must have to stay inside a bunch because of the smoke. Yeah. Yeah, Gavin, that, that's it. It's kind of sucked. Like I had a, you know, I wanted, there was one more. I actually, I managed to do some hiking last week. Like I hiked, uh, there's the one trail on the resort, which I hadn't done yet. Small little trail called Greeley Trail. And then I did a big hike actually in the Nash, on Revelstoke National Park on Mount Revelstoke to a lake, which was awesome. Like we had a little brief like break from all the smoke. Um. And the, 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 the Greeley trail one I wanted to film. And then I, I could have like completed all of the resort hikes to show you guys. But, um, yeah, it's just probably for the last two to three weeks, it's not been good to be outside. And so it's been a lot of like staying inside and just, um, yeah, trying to get all this stuff sorted with the visa situation and, I don't know. I, I hope maybe things clear up and maybe I can start bring you a couple more vlogs in September. But uh, yeah, I've kind of just thought, well, the last couple of weeks, if I can't get out, let's just keep doing the live stream here and uh, yeah, share, hang out with you guys that way. Um, it, it's tough. I bought a bike, actually. I bought a road bike about two, three weeks ago. I got it from uh, Decathlon, you know, so I wasn't wanting to fork out too much. And it's great. Like it means I could I could like cycle around, and I was going to the beaches and stuff. And but then, um, yeah, I've had a bit of a problem with the one of the crank arms and the the pedal. And it turned out that I when I got it, I assembled it wrong, and I screwed the pedal into the crank arm the wrong way. Um, and it's completely like shaving off the, um, I guess the grooves. So, um, yeah. I don't know. It's uh, I got to either buy a new crank arm or take it in town to get that kind of like re re grooved. Um, but again, with all the smoke outside, I'm not really rushing to to bike out there right now. The fires are extraordinary. Seems to be tons of nations on fire in a way in previous years there has not been. Yeah, man. I mean, mm -hmm. we're getting into I guess like climate change topic here, aren't we? But it is it is really bad. It's unprecedented. It does seem to be getting worse, especially here in Canada right now. Um, it, it's just like, the regard, depending on what season you're in, it's such extremes. And, and the summers are just, there's no respite. You get like, especially here in the mountains, you get like, um, I don't know, you get like a, a, a thunderstorm that rolls through. It might, there's like a slight chance that it might dump some rain. But then all it does, it rains for like 30 minutes, 
the humidity goes up again and then we're right back up to 33 34 degrees at the next day you know it's been relentless um and yeah you know that that heat that heat does get tiring i found I'm more of a cold person, a cold weather kind of guy, definitely. But, you know, it's nice to be out and have that heat. But, uh, yeah, it's just it, uh, just just enough now, you know, like praying that we get a bit of a, a change now. It, it's been a little bit cooler yesterday and today. Um, maybe maybe this week is going to settle down here in Revy. I don't know. I don't know how things are going to play out elsewhere weather is definitely not like that here our weather is trash lol yeah you can have some of this heat if you want gavin i'll send it your way yeah yeah it's uh just trying to think what else have i been up to just make you then you've got to start coming up with plans of stuff you can do inside right like uh revy's got a cool little cinema and i got a free ticket uh, which I might, I want to try and watch Oppenheimer if I can, because uh, I've not seen that yet. Um, 10, 10 degrees. Yeah, you have to wrap up and put a jumper on there, mate. 10 degrees. <laughs> That's on the East Coast. Gosh. Oppenheimer's good movie. Oh, okay, man. Yeah, they look good. The trailer looked good. Um, it's a cool, cool like vintage kind of cinema in town, and and they have one, what the kind of one or two main movies that'll be on at any given time. So, uh, you know, Barbie came through here about a, a few weeks ago, and everyone was all over that. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I think, is in there right now, and then Oppenheimer's coming. So. And there's live music as well on in town, like every single night um, in the plaza. It's free, free concerts, July and August. Um, and yeah, it's, you know, it's like right next to my work. So you hear them all like tuning up as I'm finishing work. It's been good. It's been good. I've, I've not gone down there recently, but there was a band a couple of weeks back from Vancouver called Brass Camel. And they were cool, man. They were like this good mix of like white stripes and... Um, yeah, just kind of a mix of stuff, and it was real good. 23 degrees in the UK. Nice. Mission Impossible is good too. Lots of good mountain shots at the end. Sadly, no snow. Oh, I'm not going to watch it then. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. Man, the Mission Impossible stuff is, is insane. Like, what Tom Cruise does is just ridiculous. Yeah. I don't know if he's ever done any skiing type stuff in his movies, though, has he? Maybe that's what's missing. So they need to do that for the final film is do a big, uh, a big ski, a ski, sh ski chase. Like the old James Bond ones. My city's ranked to have the worst weather in Canada. Oh no. Yeah. I mean, everybody's starting to talk a little bit now just about it was like uh, I was at the swim center the other day and just everyone was, was kind of like, yeah, we're over summer now, which uh, we want to start everyone. We were just starting having conversations already about like the winter and skiing and stuff. And I guess like just, you know, talking about that man also man, takes your mind off all the fires and the smoke and yeah. I think, guys, I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, man, today's been good fun. I've really enjoyed this. And I really appreciate everyone who's who's chimed in and come in and hung out today and, and shared everything. So 
real thank you. And yeah, let's do this again, same time, probably same time next week. Be, I'll do it 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. here on the on the Pacific. Um, as I said, yeah, um, I've, I've launched uh, channel memberships now. Um, you can you may see on the channel there's a there's a section there that says join. Um, and there's a uh, two tiers available there. It gives you a lot of different perks, like some uh, membership badges and emojis. And if you go for the the Nomad chat, you get access to a private Discord chat where you can reach out to me anytime. Um, I'll be probably doing a bit of a video to talk more about that um, and explain it. But uh, yeah, if you want to show some support to the channel, uh, yeah, please do check that out. Um, click the join button. There's some community posts as well, which have some information on it. But thanks to everyone who, who's who's uh, chimed in today. Ollie, definitely send me an email. I'll get that. Uh, I'll get that goggle sock sent out to you. Hope everybody has a good rest of their Sunday. And I will see you guys next time. All right, I'm out of here.